Today's uh, video is going to be on the much maligned Bose 901 uh, Series 1 uh, loudspeakers and the uh, heavily modified uh, Bose Series 2 equalizer that I did for it. Hope you enjoy it and hope we break a lot of myths today. So here's the dog's breakfast Bose Series 2 equalizer with differential inputs and outputs. So I've replaced the cheesy, buzzy uh, transformer that it came with 50 years ago with this big toroidal transformer that's got uh, 22 VAC on both the primary and secondary, 7.2 amps if you're just using the primary, or 3.6 amps if you're using both primary and secondary taps, which I am in this example. So the primary tap feeds an industrial full wave bridge rectifier here which is then going into the box and feeds three Kemet super low ESR capacitors these are 475 microfarads Bose's uh, schematics has 500 tomato tomato but yeah I've got 20 volts DC 18 volts DC and 16 volts DC going into the box here. One issue I had though was even though this is 22 VAC and then coming out of the rectifier you'll have a little bit of a drop I just couldn't keep the 20 volts stable enough to then have the 18 and 16 volts be accurate. What I found I had to do was I voltage regulated that little bit and I tried doing a voltage divider routine didn't work either so I've got this little uh, regulator from uh, Amazon. Again, added my big boy uh, 100 microfarad low ESR uh, Vichy aluminum electrolytics here. Again, to keep things clean and it fixed the problem. You know, I've got 18 where I should have 18, 16 where I should have 18, and 20 coming in. And again, I will post links um, to the Bose schematic and all my other sources that I got the parts for this uh, dog's breakfast. So that's the DC path for the box. Now for these Chinese made balanced and un balanced to unbalanced and unbalanced to balanced uh, adapter boards from China, I would ripped out the cheesy capacitors they came with and installed the same Vichy 100 microfarad US made uh, aluminum electrolytics, low ESR, bypass them with Weeman 100 nanofarads. For the op amps for now, I'm using OPA 2134s, four of them, two on the top board, two on the bottom board. I will be replacing these with OPA 627s using Brown Dog uh, adapter boards, so I can have two OP 60, 627s plugged into one. Um, dip socket here, here, and again underneath as well. So this second board is basically just a split rail power supply. Basically, same thing. Got my favorite little Vichy caps there to keep things clean. Bypass capacitors under the board here, which you can't see. I have surface mount two 100 nanofarad ceramic caps for bypass capacitors for these for these two guys here and that gives me a nice clean minus plus and minus 15 volts going into both uh, op amp rails now the audio path essentially comes into these two XLRs then is converted to single ended which feeds into the Bose box here, the output of which goes to the input of the underlying board. So the output of that then goes to my PS audio amplifiers. Now a lot of people will say, you know, you shouldn't, if it's a single-ended RCA setup, leave it as is. Don't mess with it. You're just going to add more noise and I agree 
there's you know can't argue common sense but I had to try this because I was getting a, some noise artifacts coming through both speakers um, a long time ago well back in November when I finished the first the first go around of this build I had a nasty hum that was basically attributed to some bad grounding that I had over here and a few crappy solder joints which I'd fixed since then. I stayed with a star grounding system inside of this box. The grounding on these two boards are not related to the grounding on this board here. Funny thing is all th this board is essentially grounded to this guy and this guy's audio ground over here and that's basically it. Now, again, by doing this whole little boardlet adapter routine and then using my chopped up uh, AudioQuest Red River cables, I was able to clean up the little noise artifacts and things like that because a lot of times you can do all the great things over here, but there's always going to be outside stuff that will try to creep in. And as we all know, balanced audio will always kick butt over single-ended, especially if you got a problem. So that's basically the end of it. Um, the other components I used, and I got to give a big shout out to DH Speakers. Um, he rebuilds all sorts of ser Bose uh, 901 equalizers, Series 1 up through Series 6. He re uh, he refoams uh, the the surrounds on your 90 on your later Series 901s because, as we all know, they rot out. So. On his website, he does a lot cleaner and a lot nicer job than I do. It was him that I got the ideas for replacing all these audio signal capacitors with these sonic caps. And what I did was, you'll see extra capacitors here that you don't see on his website uh, EQ boxes. So there are two sets of five microfarads here and over here and what he does is he keeps an electrolytic on the one side and he has the five microfarad mounted on the other in the other location and I'd have to reference the schematic to show you why he does it but there's a method to everybody's madness and uh, you know his customers have no complaints and either do I for that matter um, but I just went whole hog and said the hell with it I'm going to change everything to five microfarads and everything to 100 nanofarads and 150 nanofarads were applicable so the only electrolytics in this entire box here is in the in the DC power supply pads for the transistors which were also replaced and again I got rid of the RCA jacks altogether. I run everything directly into these boards. These boards also come with RCA connectors, which you can see I've ripped out because I needed the space. Bottom line. If I could have used them, I would have, but you know. So, yeah, I just went straight into the boards. The results are really good. I mean, I've got no complaints whatsoever. It's sweet sounding. I got tons of bass, beautiful mid range. The top end is super sweet, and the funny thing I would found was with my PS Audio setup, it's pretty much um, a set it and forget, forget it scenario. The Bose EQ, um, ignore the RCX XLR thing, that was a stupid idea I had when I first set this up. This thing's basically dead, doesn't do anything. Looks cool, that's about it. Um, I'm going to do another demo on the equalizer switch here, which again, I'll reference the schematic and the owner's manual, but I found all the way to position 5, I had to look that up, and flipping the high frequency on and turning off 
the old subsonic filter, the good old LP days, which I'm no longer a part of, thank God, um, was my key to success. I can play any kind of music, jazz, classical, rock, and I just set it and forget it. Uh, when I had the CQ set up with my just the Sony receiver or my old Marantz receiver, I always had to fiddle with it. If I was watching home theater stuff, I'd have to reduce it down to what they consider as the flat position um, up here. Uh, then anytime I would play any DSD files or anything straight out flat, I'd have to crank it all the way up like this. Not with the PS Audio setup, with the two, two Stellar S M700s and the St Stellar Gain Cell DAC preamp, I just set it and forget it. Done. Um, I got rid of the old neon light, stuck a nice, nice little white LED in there to kind of modern things up. And that's basically it. My chassis is basically, as you can see, just a piece of MDF. And primarily that's it, folks. You know, I'll put some links down below. I still have to do a bill of materials for this thing. It's been on my to-do list, but every time I go to do it, I add more crap on it. All right. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope I didn't uh, ramble on too much. So we'll see you again. Thank you. So just a quick update. Uh, since I did the video, I received some uh, Brown Dog uh, SOIC uh, adapters, and I'd mounted uh, OPA 627 uh, analog devices, formerly Burr Brown uh, op amps. And as much as there's controversy about op amp rolling and all that stuff, uh, depending on the application, the nonsense is real. Because I noticed that the bass tightened up, uh, the treble or the top end was a tad sweeter, and the mids had a little more presence to it. And yes, I hand soldered these myself. I didn't order them like that, although you can go to Brown Dog's website and order them configured the way you want them. So essentially it's two single-ended OP8627 op amps mounted on one DIP8 adapter. And that's the back side with the other uh, single op amp uh, OP8627 mounted on it. This one was a real bugger to install because of the DIP uh, pin leads and all that next to it. But I did get it in there, checked it with a multimeter, make sure there was no solder shorts anywhere, and she's good to go. Another word of warning, these things do get very warm, which I've attached the slides to the uh, to the little um, YouTube uh, video here, before and after temperatures. So you, I'll send put the link underneath. Amazon has these cute little uh, uh, copper so-called copper heat sinks but they do do the job they dissipate the heat so these OPA 627s should last a very long time thanks for watching the video and hope you come back there'll be more thanks